With a loud stomp, the final skeleton skull crumbled beneath the boot of Rory the Dwarf. Is that the last of them? He called to his friends. Looking around, the other dwarves and halflings all seemed to be okay. The skeletons proved to be more scary than deadly. Rory was unsure how long they had fought the monsters, but as he checked on his friends, day began to break. They had been up all night fighting the undead. As the sun rose, they decided to take a look around. At the back of the shack, they discover a cellar entrance. The doors are stiff and clearly haven't been opened in some time, but with some muscle from the stout dwarves, the doors are forced open. Heading down into the cellar, the air is stuffy and thick with dust. At first glance, it appears to be a simple storage area. The walls are lined with crates and barrels, and there's even an odd coffin in the far corner. However, what really catches the eyes of our adventurers are several locked chests. So, you just finished making your first cardboard shack. Feels pretty good, huh? Now it's time to clean up. We better throw away all these extra bits, right? Wrong! Let's use our leftover bits to make something cool. To start making barrels, we'll need two things to trace circles with. One smaller and one bigger. I'm using a golf stick and a cap from a chapstick. We'll use these to draw circles on some cardboard. Make about twice as many smaller circles than bigger ones. To make the skeleton of our barrel, we're going to glue our circles into a little column with three bigger circles in the middle and three little circles on each end. You can experiment to make whatever size barrels you want. While that dries, let's make some crates. First, we'll make three quarter inch squares out of cardboard. Then, we'll glue them together to make a cube about three quarters of an inch high. For me, that was seven layers. For a little variation, I made some rectangular crates too, about a half inch wide, a half inch tall, and an inch long. Our treasure chest is going to be similar to a crate. We'll make a rectangular shape, and then cover the top with semicircles to be the lid for the chest. Coffins are pretty easy too. Just cut out a coffin shape that's wider where someone's shoulders would be and then narrower at the top and bottom. Make sure it's thick enough so that a regular mini could fit inside. Mine was three layers thick. To add more detail to our shack, we can make a modular cellar entrance. We'll start with a big door about one and a half inches tall and one inch wide. Then make two right triangles. Mine had a height of about three quarter of an inch and base of one and a quarter inch. Just glue them together to make a slope. We will want a lot of our wood textured cardstock, and because these are small pieces, we're going to make it even more finely textured than on the shack. The more work we put into the detail here, the better it will look in the end. We want to cover everything with the wood plank texture. I'm going to start with the crates. Put glue all on one side and put on your planks. Then do the same for the opposite side, running your planks in the same direction. For the rectangular crates, I'm just putting the planks all in the same longer direction. It doesn't matter which direction they go for the smaller sides, so long as both sides are the same. We'll take some little bits of cardstock and add them on wherever it looks good for more detail. The inspiration for the square style of crate is from a video by Eric's Hobby Workshop. Just like Eric did, we'll have the planks on each side of our square crate all run perpendicular to each other, and you can check out his videos for more amazing crafting. The barrel is the trickiest thing we're making today. My strategy is to glue on four planks to make a frame, and then after those dry, to glue on more to fill in the gaps. Patience is your greatest ally here. The treasure chest is just like the rectangular crate. It has a round top and sides, but gluing the planks is exactly the same. For a nice detail, I cut a little trapezoid out of regular not textured cardstock. We'll paint it metallic and it will be a lock. And that finishes the two crates and the treasure chest. 
Continuing the barrel, we'll glue four more planks into the gaps to keep building up the frame. Texturing the coffin is pretty straightforward. Have the two big sides run in the same direction. And then do the same for the little sides. With the barrel, it helps if you bend and curve the planks before gluing them on to fill in the rest of the gaps. The cellar entrance is really straightforward too. It's almost like a tiny version of our shack. Just glue the planks on the top, trim them, and then do the same for the sides. With plain cardstock, we'll add a metal strip and a handle for the doors. That's perfect. Finally, to finish the barrel, we'll wrap some thin strips of plain cardstock around both ends for the metal bands that hold the planks in place. Almost forgot to add texture to the top and bottom. Now you can pursue a fulfilling new career as a cooper, no student loans necessary. My beginner painting tip is to start with darker colors and then go up to lighter shades. That is the entirety of my painting knowledge. So, I primed everything in black to start. Then I have some different shades of brown and tan to try and get a nice wood color, and then our off-white to give an aged weathered look. Start with a light base coat of brown, so that you don't drown all the details like I did on my first try. Brushing in the direction of your wood grain can give a good look too. After the first layer, I gave everything a second coat of nutmeg brown. This may have been unnecessary, but it turned out alright. Here's everything with two thin coats of brown over the black. And now for the off-white dry brush to give our wood a weathered appearance. This is perfect. Look at how well it matches our shack. For a slightly different wood color, I'm dry brushing the rest of the pieces with a beige. Then we'll use a metallic gunmetal gray and a gold to paint the metal bits like door handles, locks for the chests, and hoops for the barrels. Not bad. But I've done a little research since the last video, and I think a dark wash would really help. From what I've learned, the easiest way to make this is with a drop or two of dish soap, some black paint, and then a little water. You want it to be pretty thin so it'll flow into the cracks of your texture. Just gently brush it on, and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel. Here you can really see the difference. And this is perfect for me because much like my life, most of my games are in ruins. I really liked how the wash looked on the cellar entrance and it made me want to try it on the whole shack. So we'll paint the wash on with a little brush and then brush it off with the big brush. Here's a side by side comparison so you can choose which you prefer. Crates, barrels, treasure chests and coffins, and entrances to basements are some of the best little pieces you can make to add life to your games. Whether to add detail and make your world seem really inhabited, to add mystery and intrigue, as treasure tokens for you and your friends to battle over, or as scatter terrain and makeshift barricades to provide cover for your characters and soldiers. You can even stack them beside a building as makeshift stairs and ladders like in the Assassin's Creed video games, as shown by the Skaven fleeing a witch hunter and his pack of dogs. Examining the chests, the adventurers see that the wood is old and the locks are rusty. 
The dwarves' hammers and axes make short work of them. Peering inside the first chest, their excitement turns to disappointment as it's filled with old books and scrolls that hardly seem of any value, although their literacy is questionable at best. Breaking open the second smaller chest, however, is where their luck truly takes a turn. Smashing off the lock, they look inside and discover what appears to be a life-size sculpture of a human skull made entirely of gold. Their eyes grow wide as the light of their torches glint off it. From the weight of it, it must be worth a fortune, one of the dwarves exclaims. We'll be rich, another yells. Rory couldn't help but stare into its empty eyes and felt as though it was staring right back at him. Excited to sell the golden skull, the small party is re-energized to continue their journey, finding their way back to the path that will lead them out of the forest of insanity. It should only be one more day's walk to make their way out of the forest and to the village. Perhaps they will find an interested buyer in Squalor Tent.